we are seeing major moves in the gold market, in the silver market. Today, we're pleased and fortunate to be joined by our friend, sur uh, Stacking Surfer, if I can speak this morning. And we're going to talk about big developments going on right now in the silver and gold markets. Stacking Surfer, welcome to Ron's Basement. Thank you. Good to have. Good to be here, Ron. So what do you what do you think's going on? Um, it's like we have red alert in the silver and gold market uh, right before we hopped on here, up twenty five thirty dollars per ounce above twenty three hundred in gold. Uh, what do you make of uh, of these recent movements in the precious metals? Well, my first thing is is I keep contemplating: do I buy more? Do I hold? So I keep looking at that, and um, every time I decide to hold, and then it goes up again, you go shoot. <laughs> um, but I, I, I personally, I like to do the dollar cost averaging thing where I, where I buy a little bit in different increments. So um, gold's a little bit trickier than silver for that. Um, honestly, Ron, I think, I think what we're seeing is people are starting to see gold as the safe haven asset. And I think silver is starting to follow suit because it's more affordable. But I think a lot of what's going on right now is you've got, you've got the geopolitical stuff happening with, mm -hmm. um, with, Israel and the Middle East, um, you know, there's we're supposed to be anticipating some kind of retaliation action in the next 24 hours or so. I think that has a little bit of a bearing on it. Um, you know, some of the things we're going to talk about on the show today has a bearing on it for sure. But I think we're now getting to that point where we're seeing gold's unhinging from, um, you know, characteristics that it normally follows. So, you know, if the market looks like it's getting stronger and better, usually gold starts to back off. And we're not seeing that anymore. We're seeing that to start to, um, you know, kind of run its own course. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're seeing is people are just starting to really trust gold and seeing it as a safe haven. And they're getting more concerned about things going on in the world. Yeah. And, and even uh, when we look at the inflation numbers, right, we're seeing inflation ticking up. And traditionally, that would mean that, uh, that the Fed would be more uh, hawkish with their monetary policy. And that would smash down the prices. But we've even begun to see that relationship disintegrate as well. Yep. Um, I want to I want to talk about ge geopolitics real quickly. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the, the the Israel situation, the Middle East. Of course, we have these uh, the situation in um, in the Ukraine and Europe and China, yep. Taiwan situation. I think a lot of us can forget that one of the primary drivers for the gold price can be geopolitical turmoil. And we are in a situation right now in this world uh, that at least in my lifetime, and I'm uh, 54 years old, uh, I, we, we, I've never experienced this level of geopolitical turmoil. And, um, and the fact that when there is a lot of turmoil, typically countries don't feel as comfortable holding each other's paper currency or IOUs, right? They will go back to gold. Any, any thoughts on that? Uh, th that's kind of what I've seen too. Um, you know, I, I started getting into investing in the markets back in like 97 mm -hmm. um, is when I started getting into there with my family's um, uh, saving, savings and loan, um, starting to understand, hey, how does this work? How do these things happen? And, you know, each time I've seen major conflicts that have come up, um, whether it be market, uh, market correction or crash, or whether it be geopolitical, you always see, at least I've always seen gold go up and then silver follows suit. Right now, we're kind of seeing them both doing it at the same time right now. However, what we have been seeing is gold going up to all-time new highs, and silver has basically been trailing that during the whole Ukraine war. So I think it is doing what it normally does. We're just in a different slice of time right now. Um, but we also had an earthquake just happen in Taiwan, which brought Taiwan to the forefront as well this week. So I do think a lot of what's going on is that concern. Um, I think you're also, you got the Bitcoin having coming up. So there's talk about Bitcoin going on. And anytime there's Bitcoin talk, there's always gold versus Bitcoin. It's the new gold, that kind of a conversation that people have out there. And anytime you say gold, it brings up gold. People think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and gold has been the, uh, the, the reliable store of value for thousands and thousands of years. I want to get your opinion on this. As, as we've experienced this rally uh, that kind of initially went on with gold and now silver is starting to follow suit. 
it seems to me it's a little different this time. Like there wasn't one big event that was the catalyst that caused a spike in the gold price. Like we saw, you know, during the uh, the initial uh, phases of the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine or any a host of other, you know, events that have occurred. It feels like this time it's a little different. Like it's a combination of strong fundamental factors that have kind of really, you know, consistently driven up the gold price. I mean, obviously it just can't go up and up and up. At some point, guys, we are going to have a correction, <laughs> but uh, let's enjoy it while it lasts for now. And hopefully it's a stair step up and there's a new floor that's been in place. But do you feel that this last couple of months has been a little different than what you've experienced over, let's say, the last few years? Uh, for sure. So one of the things I've been saying, Ron, too, along with this is, um, you know, I'm a propo I'm a proponent that inflation is something you want to keep in control. Mm -hmm. And I am so surprised the Fed is not raising rates. Um, to me, the rates should be significantly higher than they are now. They should have raised them much more than they did in the past. And, um, you know, the only case I see for gold going really significantly down is if we have a major rug pull from Jerome Powell with interest rates going up. And right now that's looking less and less likely. Um, it looks more like he's just going to hold them steady. So with that said, um, it does feel different. Um, you know, when we had the Ukraine war start, we saw gold jump and then it went down shortly after that. Um, when we had the banking crisis last year, we saw gold jump and then we saw it go back down. Um, right now we're seeing what I would call a different trend, but we've also hit a quadruple top. We've had a cup and handle. And as you're probably aware, usually those have, I can't remember the exact percentage. It's somewhere around 70 or 80% of the time they go up in a mm -hmm. breakout versus down, but there's always a breakout one way or the other. So I'm looking really closely this weekend to see what happens today and on Sunday afternoon and then Monday morning to see what gold does to help me determine whether we're really in a breakout and we're going to see some, you know, a new, a new higher low um, and new highs, or are we potentially going to have that correction? Right. And, and if we do have the correction, it's okay. It's normal. Sure. Uh, yeah. But we, we want some kind of a correction because if this goes all the way up to three thousand dollars, for example, you're going to have a major crash back down. Yeah. It's it's a it's a rubber band. It always flexes. So yeah. I'd rather have these little steps that go than have it just skyrocket. Yeah. And um, you, I'm hearing a lot of the top analysts say that uh, that gold has broken out. That as you referred to this cup and handle, and they've been. You know, people like Peter Grandich and um, uh, it's a Michael Oliver, these top guys, they've been talking about this cup and handle in gold for years. Um, and now it has officially broken out. Like you said, I think there was a triple top in gold as well, which is very, yeah, very quadruple. Quadruple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's really rare. Because there was also, but wait, surfer, there's more. There was an inverse head and shoulders in gold yeah. as well, an upside down head. And there's ways you can measure from the head to the mean. And, you know, it's supposed to go up to 2,800, whatever. I mean, every technical pattern in the books, um, uh, and I was speaking with Jordan, uh, Jordan Roy Byrne from the Daily Gold podcast uh, just yesterday. We've got a video coming out. He's a real heavy technical analyst. He's like, he said, it's gold and it's silver in these chart setups are like for the textbooks of the future, yeah. right? Like we're going to look back at these and say, look at this. This is a textbook example of what's going on. Um, I want to I want to circle back to maybe some of the fundamental reasons. We talked about geopolitics being a big supportive factor for these moves that we're seeing uh, in gold and silver. But, you know, I, I, to me, if, if I want to make it real simple, I can say, well, gold's moving up and silver is moving up and will continue to move up simply because the value of the dollar in real terms, in real terms, there's all this short term noise. They can make the DXY and inflation rate. All this, but in real terms, um, because I can work a calculator and I can, you know, apply a certain degree of common sense and intelligence, the value, the real value of the dollar is going down. Is that, is that safe to say? Uh, yeah. I mean, my understanding is it's lost 98% of its value um, from the early 1900s. Um, now, a lot of people will say the dollar is dead. Um, I think we'll continue to use the term dollar for the existence of this country. So 
Um, I don't think it's actually going to die. I think it's just going to limp along very slowly and have a slow death, or it could be a quicker, faster, you know, time period towards death. But um, I re- one of my favorite movies growing up, Ron, was Back to the Future and Back to the Future 2. And I remember the um, Marty McFly going in and buying a, co- a Pepsi for $50. Yeah. Um, we're not there yet, <laughs> but I think we're heading there very quickly. So um, I'm in Southern California. All of our um, restaurants are now paying mandatory by the state, except for one of them, which I won't name, that had a special deal. Um, $20 per hour minimum wage for restaurants. So what we're seeing is instead of the prices skyrocket right at the moment, they are going to go up, but we we are seeing mass layoffs. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's just another way that you're going to see the dollar continue to lose its value. Um, it, it's just going to continue to buy less and less. Um, I've gone from $6 for a chicken bowl from one of my favorite places all the way up to about $15 now, and I'm anticipating $20 pretty soon. Yeah. 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 That's what I tell people. Like, just think back to 1990. If you had a $100 bill and went to the grocery store, what you could get with that $100 bill and compare that to what that $100 bill will get you today. But then what's interesting is look at a chart of the DXY. And according to the chart, uh, the dollar it may even be supposedly be more powerful now than what it was in 1990. But that's just because you're comparing it to a bunch of other cruddy currencies, basically. Uh, yeah. The, the underlying fundamental. And look, I, I'm not anti-patriotic. I love this country. I don't agree with the fiscal and monetary decisions that were made by our quote unquote leadership, maybe over the last 40, 30, 20 years, whatever. Um, but it's just the reality that the dollar and, and I and I appreciate you bringing this up, like I'm not predicting that oh, by next Friday, the dollar is going to be gone and, you know, anything like that, or, you know, who knows, anything could happen. But sure. I think what what's most likely to occur is uh, a continued devaluation of the dollar, which will naturally um, be good for the silver and gold price measured in dollar terms. And I would almost say with a high level of confidence, not just a continued devaluation, but maybe even a little bit more accelerated than what we've experienced over the last 20 years? Yeah, I I, um, I think if you look back in history, I, I don't have that chart up, but there's a chart that shows like a dollar bill and it shows it coming down over time, the value. Yeah, You'll see that there are spikes down. So there's definitely yeah. times where you have accelerated declines. Um, right now is one of those times. And um, I, we've all felt it. You know, We hear that inflation last year was around, oh, I don't know, what did they say? Six, seven, eight um, percent. Yeah. To me, it felt like it was like 25% or so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they they can every president that comes in continues to change the the jo- how they do unemployment a little bit and how they do CPI a little bit. Um, and that's not necessarily always the president that's changing that, but let's just say each presidency it, it changes. Um, and so it's hard to like compare the past to today because they do do that. But right now I am seeing a, a de- a, an acceleration towards the dollar weakening and losing that value. But I I think to keep in mind is those last 2% can take a while to to lose. And then living not too far from Mexico, Mexico's revaluated their currency multiple times. So we may see something like that happen again, um, where we end up, you know, doing like a reverse stock split, so to speak with the currency. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting uh, scenario that we're living under. uh, is it okay if I quickly say thank you to my channel sponsor, yeah, Pimbex? No. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Pimbex, for sponsoring Ron's Basement, making this live stream possible. Pimbex is an online bullion dealer where you can shop for silver, mm-hmm. gold, and platinum. You're going to find what I found out when I worked with Pimbex, and that is you'll always get ultra competitive prices and you'll get great service and great selection. Do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex. Thank you, Stacking Surfer. Without the sponsors, I can't have the channel going. So, uh, so, so in next, in a little while, we're gonna, I'm gonna take people out to your YouTube channel to show them what you're doing. But I have to ask you, you are the Stacking Surfer. Which do you prefer to stack, silver or gold? Does it uh, does it change over time? What variables do you look at when you're? Will you let us into the mind of the stacking server? 
I will. So first, let me tell you how the name came to be. Um, the stacking is probably pretty obvious uh, for most of you. I like precious metals. I, I got into precious metals back in 2019. Um, I didn't really start stacking until 2021. Um, that's when I saw that there was enough money printing. I was pretty sure inflation was going to kick in and I sold all my stocks and started buying precious metals heavily. Um, the stacking part is that, but it also goes a little bit more. I, the reason I don't have gold or silver in the channel name is that I also stack other things like emergency food, um, water, um, lead. And, um, and then I also stack, um, not at the moment, but I will in the future, um, stack real estate and other things like that too. So I kind of kept it a little bit open-ended. And then the surfer part's interesting. I do surf. I'm not a massive surfer that surfs these big wave, wave, um, waves. Um, I've been surfing for about seven years and I love it. Um, I grew up in Southern California, never surfed when I was a kid. My parents didn't take me to the beach. I thought we were really far away from it. And then I found out we were like 20 minutes from it and I was <laughs> not happy about it. But, <laughs> but, um, but I do love surfing. And what I liked in combining the name together was really to, to surf different waves and trends that come in. And so for me in 2019, I saw the inflation kicking in and I started stacking gold. So I'm a fan of bullion and pre-33 gold. Um, I have some that's slabbed. I have some that is just raw. Um, you know, for anybody that's looking at pre-33 gold, one thing I'll just point out there is it's really hard to judge the value of it when it's not slabbed. Um, you definitely want to have an expert kind of help you with that or someone at a coin store buying that stuff off of eBay um, can be a dime or dozen on what you really get out of it. Um, but I started with gold first. And so I kind of consider myself a gold bug from that standpoint. But now that I understand the gold to silver ratio more and I'm looking at that, I'm putting way more silver into my stack today. Mm -hmm. um, and I've even sold a little bit of gold. I haven't gone crazy with it, but I have sold some of my bullion, which is much easier to sell than the pre-33 stuff. That's a long-term hold. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been buying silver now. So um, that's kind of my new my new thing for this year is really doubling down on silver. My ratio is about 30 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold. Mm -hmm. And um, this year I'm going to be buying at a 300 ounce of silver to one ounce of gold ratio. Okay. Interesting. But when it comes to this pre-33 gold, are you buying that for the numismatic value, the, the collector, collectible yeah, value? 50, 50. So, okay. So part, part of what I'll buy, mo most of what I'm buying is graded at MS62 and I'm paying like $100 over the price of a gold eagle or buffalo. Okay. Um, you know, for about the same, it's not exactly the same weight. It's, it's slightly less. I think it's like mm -hmm. 0.98 or so for the $20, $20 um, double eagles. Um, but if I can find them at a good price, um, those are coins that I do like to pick up. Um, I do have a couple that are more pricey in my collection, but that's something I don't really recommend people do um, unless you have completely taken care of your entire stack needs and you're just having fun at that point. Okay. <laughs> having fun. It's <laughs> always, <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, avoid. that's what I, that that's always been my approach is to avoid the high premiums. If, uh, if premiums are higher, I tend to be buying more, silver bars and i'm i'm a more of a of a silver i own a ton of gold mining stocks that's how i have so i have a keen interest in the price of gold trust me uh, but i've always i'm also uh, uh what's a nice way to say a uh, resourceful with my money um and maybe uh maybe not smart as well but i always would i'd look at gold look at silver and um uh, I guess like my, my wife might say, Susie might say that I'm a little cheap at times and I always would go to the silver. So I'm like, and I love silver, but, but the decision between bars and coins, you know, when the premiums were high, like I would have never touched an American silver Eagle uh, a year ago when they were selling it, <coughs> those massive premiums over spot. Yeah. I was more, you know, going to buy bars at that point, but Eight weeks ago, I couldn't believe how affordable American Silver Eagles had become. And I love them, right? They're my favorite thing. I always have to show this one briefly, right? To me, there's almost nothing as beautiful as that, right? Um, so I was I started buying American Silver Eagles. But how, well, this is going to be a two-part question for yeah. you, Jared, okay? Um, um, very a, a very popular question that a lot of our viewers have is, when do we sell? When do we know it's time to sell silver? When do we know it's time to, and no one has a perfect answer for that question, right? <laughs> I mean, 
not yet anyway. Um, but what are your thoughts on, on, on when to sell? And then I'll, I'll hit you with the sure. second part after that. So, so a couple things for me, um, I live in Southern California. House prices are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the reasons I got into, besides the inflation aspect, the other one was I always wanted to have funds that could cover my um, uh, property tax for my house. So the other reason I have gold too is to cover property tax. So for me, um, you know, I don't invest in gold and silver. Um, I use it as savings and it's very strategic to me. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it is I have a stack for my property tax. I want to have three years worth of property taxes in, in gold set aside yeah. deep in a safe or in a vaulting facility. Mine's in a vaulting facility away from my house because I show my face. Um, yeah. And we have Chilean cartels rob in our neighborhood all the time. They just hit us last week and um, they hit us about 10 times uh, last year. And they've taken an accumulation of a half a million dollars away from uh, the neighborhood, which wow. is a little bit scary. And we have great police and everything, but um, you know we've been under attack here. So that's my strategy with gold is two ways. One, it's to hedge inflation so that I don't lose my purchase power. And mm -hmm. it's also property taxes. My silver is a little different. I look at silver from um, three standpoints. One is I have some fun collectible coins. Um, like I just got a Star Wars Death Star. I'm a big Star Wars fan and I overpaid wow. and that was a stupid purchase. Okay. But it's a fun <laughs> collectible and I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so um, that one I'm going to unbox here later today. But I'll do that every once in a while, but that's kind of a small portion of my stack. Um, I did it too heavily when I started and I am unloading a lot of that right now mm -hmm. um, by other stuff. Then the other part of my stack is like a prepper stack in case we have um, issues with the economy um, or with money or the internet or electricity or anything. I have a lot of like pre, uh, sorry, um, 1964 and older constitutional silver. Some of you guys may refer to it as junk. And that I don't really plan on selling because it's really there for an emergency to use for um, buying things. So I also don't stack a ton of it, but I have enough that I think is good enough for my family. And then the third one is really my general silver, which is like my bars and my eagles and my rounds. And when I'm buying, I'm really just buying based on price. So I haven't really bought a lot of eagles until this year. Um, mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was buying rounds and bars, kind of like you talked about too. Um, when do you sell? So here, here's yeah, the, come on, come on, yeah. surfer. That's what we have. When do tell us here's exactly when, at, when, when, so, and how to sell, and exactly how much, and at exactly. And I'm, I'm just joking, but no, so your I'll, thoughts. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, I'm, I, I've been selling gold this year. Okay, mm -hmm. so as it's going up, I've been selling a little bit of gold here and there, and when I can find a deal, I'll pick more up. So um, that's kind of what I'm doing. I have an eBay store. I'll kind of move gold here and there. I've got local people that are looking for gold. Um, and if I've got some, I'll sell it to them. And then I can replace it at a little bit lower um, you know, cost than what I sold it for. But for me, I'm also moving a little bit more into silver this year. So for me, silver, I'm probably looking at a minimum of about a $30 price on spot before mm -hmm. I would consider selling. Um, but I really do think we're going to go above that. I don't know if that'll happen this year, but if I look between now and 2030, um, I can't see us, in my opinion, I can't see us below a $50 silver. Maybe we could even get as high as a hundred dollars silver. Yeah. So for me, if I'm going to be selling, I'm looking to wait for some of that to happen. But like I mentioned right now, I am selling a lot of my collectible or semi numismatic coins. Um, that I overpaid and have too high of a premium on. And I'm putting that into constitutional and to Eagles at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, the value proposition on the Eagles, you find that attractive at this point? I, I do. So the, the semi-newsmatic stuff, just to clarify out there, it doesn't really move. Um, it's a great product when prices are going down because it doesn't move down very mm -hmm. much. It's a, it's a bad product when prices are moving up because it also doesn't move up. So all that happens is it's more desirable when prices are going up. It's less desirable when prices are going down. And so I've kind of stuck myself into a price. I'm not going to take, be able to take advantage of, of silver re reevaluating. So that's why I'm selling that. The Eagles, if I can get an Eagle within $3 of a round, I'm going to buy Eagles all day long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. How closely do you follow this gold to silver ratio? It's been getting a lot of attention recently. Uh, you know, it bumped up against 90, maybe even into the low 90s a few weeks back. And I know it's pulled back a little bit recently to 85. Uh, 
how would that factor into decisions you might make? And uh, and this a second part to that question, you talked about a an elastic band or a rubber band earlier. Do you believe in the possibility of a slingshot move in the price of silver, where you know we have gold continuing to march higher? In that oh, yeah. uh, that that's gold to silver ratio is is like a rubber band, like a like a bungee cord that's getting stretched and stretched, pulling, you know, pulling the silver price along. But at some point, all that energy in that gold to silver elastic band gets released, and silver shoots up. Right, so a couple things: um, anything over eighty on the on the gold to silver ratio, which um, by the way, it should be silver to gold ratio, just yeah. <laughs> technical terms, but. Um, anything above 80 to me is a, is a buy signal for silver. Yeah. Um, anything below 60 for me is more of a buy signal for gold. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can get more extremes and it gets more desirable each way. Um, I agree with you. So I think that you are going to see that gold to silver ratio go back down towards 60. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll go a lot lower. You know, I, I've heard people talk about it, get down to the you know, the one, to, the 10 to one or the seven to one, or maybe even lower than that. I have a hard time understanding or, or, or seeing a scenario where that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not exactly sure what would cause that. I don't know if that means we've just run out of silver and they're really pushing, you know, the green energy thing, or, um, you know, if some other factor comes into play. So I'm not exactly sure what would cause that, but what I can tell you is it does equalize. It is like a rubber band, like you're saying. And so two things have to happen. One of two things has to happen. Either gold has to come down right. and silver holds steady or silver has to spring up. What I'm seeing with gold is I don't see that shooting back down. There's no indication of the U.S. Um, controlling inflation. There's no indication that we're going to become even stronger as a, as a um, petrodollar or a reserve currency. I'm seeing everything on the opposite side of things. Yeah. And so I think you're right. I think we're going to see it spring and I don't think we're going to be able to adjust to it very quickly because it's going to happen so fast. Um, I, I'm thinking within a couple of days to a week or so, it could jump to that where that ratio starts to equalize, you know, down around 60, 50, somewhere around there. And when that happens, everybody's going to be like, wow, what do I do? Do I sell? Do I right. sell or do I hold on? And the issue, guys, is if you never sell it and you always hold it, um, you won't be taking any of that advantage. Um, you don't really borrow against your silver. It's not like a like a piece of property that you can go get a loan against. Um, and so if you never take those profits, I think you're going to run into a situation where um, you, you ride things back down. So you're going to see prices go up. You're going to see them come down. You're going to see them go up. You'll see higher highs and, and higher lows, um, but it'll come back down again. So that's what I'm looking for, Ron, is, um, and I, I usually have my bars for that. So mm -hmm. I'll be looking to move my bars when we see that ratio starting to move down. Yeah, it'll be a, uh, it'll be an interesting scenario. And it is hard to imagine looking out five to 10 years when you just look at all the different variables that could affect the silver price. Uh, it's just hard to imagine a scenario where the price could be lower. It could happen, right? I mean, anything could happen. But when you look at the basic supply and demand fundamentals, and I like to throw in that uh, basically in the West, I mean, you and I and the people that are joining us today, we love silver. We love to talk about silver. But uh, overall, retail and even in the West, institutional investor demand is way down. So if we get a pickup in the in that regard, it could make for some very very interesting times uh, for the for the silver price. I'm going to run out to your um, to your YouTube channel uh, so awesome. we can sh we can sure. show everybody the Stacking Surfer. I've been been following Stacking Surfer for probably about six months. So um, here's his channel, and Jared, I'll just let you you know give a little background on what's going on there. And uh, yeah, uh, so. So ba basically, here's my um, channel in a nutshell. First off, there's a big wave that's up there. So you know, I think we're I think we're going to be able to have an opportunity, and we're starting to write it right now. The largest gold and silver wave we've ever seen in history. I think that's what's coming. Um, could I be wrong? I could. I'm not a you know I I don't I'm not a prophet. I can't see the future, but <laughs> I think we're going to see a massive wave that's coming here. So what happened to me is when I first got in starting into stacking, is I did buy too much collectible collectible silver. I bought too much expensive stuff. So I set out to create a channel to help educate people so that if someone like myself comes upon the channel again, 
um, you know, I would stack differently. So a lot of that's this. You can see my junk silver here. I hate calling it junk, but it fits on the thumbnail easier. So you'll have it there every once in a while. But um, to me, you know, these are my favorite gold coins. These are my favorite silver coins that I like to stack. I, I do like Morgans and Peace Dollars when I can buy them at a at a good price. Um, I just picked up a whole bunch of them at um, $25 um, two or three weeks ago um, each, which is a great price for a Morgan and a Peace Dollar. Um, but really my channel is about education. We also have some fun. I'll be doing a lot of videos this, uh, this year at the beach or the piers where I'm asking people if they'd rather have an ice cream bar or a silver bar. And then I'll be trying to see if I can sell a, you know, a half dollar Benjamin for $10 us just to get people more educated and aware of what gold and silver stacking is. And then more recently I've started interviewing people. So um, that's kind of a newer thing that I've done where I'm bringing some other experts on to, to add to the channel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to break in and tell everyone um, that, that I am a little jealous of the stacking surfer. And I've told him this because he gets to be in California at the beach and I'm stuck in a basement in Missouri, right? Talking to everybody. So one of these days I will be, I will be with him uh, out there and yeah, that'd be uh, great. Come out. Out there in California. Okay, back to your channel. I see you had Andy Schechtman on. Uh, he's a big Boy, name, big name celebrity. I did. So um, I, I'm a big believer of uh, what I'll call the law of attraction, or I like to also call it faith. Okay, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a faithful person, and I heard he was coming out to the um, Silver Symposium in Las Vegas. And so um, I bought myself a ticket. I got a flight. I used uh, some Marriott points that I had. And I went out to Vegas with the sole intention of meeting Andy. Mm -hmm. And um, so I met him there. And I had a great conversation with he, with he and his wife for about an hour. And wow. the end of that was, hey, we would love to come on your show and, um, and, and talk to you. So, um, so Andy's a great guy. Um, and I don't know if it shows on there. I think it's almost like 47,000 views, which is my best video so far. And we talked some great information there about current trends and where, where we think silver and the gold to silver ratio could come into play. So one thing I'll just throw out, guys, when you're looking at thumbnails, thumbnails are there to catch your attention. We try to get a subject matter in there. It's For me, it's always relevant to what's in the video. But I know a lot of people just look at thumbnails. They don't even always watch things. But um, look at the titles, look at thumbnails, and then watch the videos. You guys will get a lot of good insight there. Yep. Yep. And I've enjoyed all of your videos. Um, you know, you do a great job. And I think like all of us, right, we're, we're trying to help uh, kind of spread the word about silver and gold. We always just give our opinions. And, you know, and I've heard you say the same thing as well. Like there's there's a lot of people. Uh, that's one great thing uh, about the silver and gold community. There's a lot of people that like to to, to talk about silver and gold. Listen to me, listen to a stacking surfer, listen to Bix Way, listen to there's a whole host of people out there and then decide for yourself. Right. Uh, nobody can tell you the, uh, you know, exactly what to buy, when to buy and nobody can predict the future. But I do I do feel like uh, like there's a general consensus within the community uh, that, that we're in for some serious doom. And, you know, I. I, I I don't want to be a, I forget, Chicken Little, is that his name that runs around? Says, yeah, sky's little. falling, sky's falling, you know, get in your basements quick, you know, <laughs> get off the beach. There's tsunamis yeah. coming or, you know, but, but it, it, do you get that feeling that, um, how do I say this, that what we're doing is very important because uh, we, we, we all admit that none of us know for sure what's going to happen. But when we examine the evidence, and I've heard Andy Schechtman say, you know, you pick up all the crumbs and try to piece together what's going on, that we could be in for some challenging times. Uh, I do. So I'll give you a quick, uh, kind of a quick analogy. Um, my son is 20 right now. And the first movie I took him to, well, the first movie I took him to where he understood what was going on in the movie was Chicken Little. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect analogy to this. There's a part <laughs> of Chicken Little where they they make fun of like Indiana Jones with the rolling ball. So right. Chicken Little sitting in a movie theater just like we are, and a rolling ball's coming at him. And my I remember this because my son was on my shoulder like this. I think he was like two, and he starts slapping my face really hard. Yeah. He's like, "We're gonna die." <laughs> 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 I knew it was a movie. He did not know it wasn't going to come out of the screen and roll us over. Okay. Right. So, you know, 
what I look at is every one of these things that we're, we're sharing, where our opinions we're giving to everybody, these are things that we see as danger marks or things that could move the market one way or the other. We don't know for sure how real they are or when they're going to happen. So I know Andy talks about the BRICS a lot, and he talks about a potential currency coming up later this year, or at least an announcement of one. Um, I can tell you if that happens, we'll see a, a definite, it'll definitely affect the price of gold and silver. Um, you know, and I, I still won't rule out the fact that we may have to go back on a gold standard or some kind of a mix of metal standard. If we lose control of inflation and we get into hyperinflation, there's really only one way to fix that historically, which is to go back on some kind of a monetary metal system. So I think we've got bright days ahead of us. Like I said, I think we've got the largest wave of gold and silver we've ever seen. And we saw a pretty good one in the 70s and 80s. Um, but we're doing a lot of things from my stamp, from my opinion, both the Congress and the Federal Reserve that is really setting us up for some massive hyperinflation in the future. And so um, I don't know how we're going to get out of it outside of that. So that's why I stack um, precious metals. And the reason I don't get into cryptocurrencies very heavily, I do dabble in them a little bit, is um, I like to hold on to something that's physical, that doesn't require electricity and um, that you know, has a real world value to it outside of just, um, you know, software. So that's really for me, that's why I look at all this stuff, Ron, and that's why I put a channel together. Um, and then I feel like it's a calling and a mission to share this with other people. And I think we're going to be ushering in a whole new generation of people that are going to be looking into gold and silver that have never bought it before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's actually, um, very exciting because if we if we think about it, we are such a small portion of the U.S. population. Uh, I don't have a beach that I can go to, Jared, but I do have a neighborhood swimming pool, like a neighborhood uh, watering hole. And and I'll tell you, uh, if I go to the neighborhood watering hole pool during the summer, and if if people come up to me and I start talking about gold and silver, they just head the other way. <laughs> right. And and we'll know that. Uh, well, I tell that story over and over. But, you know, I, I think one of the signs that it might be time to sell is be if I ever become popular at the neighborhood swimming pool. Yes, uh, that'll be yes. the big in, that'll be the big indicator. Um, but that there is such a massive runway. I mean, it stinks. Well, you know, hey, look, I think Susie just said, my wife just said that uh, silver, well, here, Silvershire is telling us silver spots at 2740 per ounce right now. Wow. That's awesome, right? Uh, and and it's silver's doing pretty well, right? We all think it should be much higher, but nonetheless, it's doing pretty, gold's obviously doing very well. And it's doing that in an environment where there's such small level of interest in it in the United States, that we have this massive runway or opportunity for uh, increased demand for the metals. So I want to run back out here real quickly. I know we're running out of time, but uh, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Is this is this the, uh, you talked about being at the movie with your two-year-old son and the giant <laughs> boulder. Yeah. Is this the giant boulder that's ro that's rolling toward us? One, our one part of the giant boulder that's rolling toward well, us? It, it is. And it's also the reason we're not on a gold standard any, anymore. They wanted to do that. Yeah. Now, you and I and everybody else on this call that's in the United States or on this on this live stream um, has had advantage from that. Just to point it out, we have a lot nicer stuff. We have nicer yeah. homes. We have nicer cars because of the debt that they put us on. However, that is something that can come falling down. Um, I mean, that is a, Ron. How do we pay that off? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a great. Um, Adam Taggart, I forget the name of his new company, but he he interviewed one of the 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 guy that used to run the Kansas City Fed, who okay. was a very vocal a proponent or opponent to what's going on, and you know basically we can't pay it off unless we get cooperation between the two political parties, and they imagine this. It's really complicated. At stacking surfer, it's this is this this, this is really complicated. But the only way we can pay it off is if we start spending less money than we bring in as a country. I mean, you know, it's it, and, and, and then we can chip away at it, but there's a big pile to chip away at. And as you and I both know right now, uh, there's like no political will in this country no. to spend less money than comes in. This guy pointed out something very interesting. He said that this current like 
political situation we're in that just keeps building these deficits and debt levels. Um, it's like the the Democrats want to continue to spend a lot of money, okay? Mm -hmm. And the Republicans, all they care about is not raising taxes. So it's kind of like if they both get their way, right? The Republicans say, well, as long as we don't raise taxes, you can keep spending money. And that just, just perpetuates the situation that we're in, right? I mean, so yeah. Yeah, it the, does. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, only way to, the only other way to pay this off is to print more money. Yeah, and, right. Um, if you print more money and the Fed buys all of the debt, it's not real. It just, you go like this. <laughs> and so all you end up with is everything. That's where you get to the $50, you know, soft drink. So um, to your point, the only way to fix this is to really start taking more receipts in from taxes and spending less. Yeah. Um, my state's in like, I think, $85 billion of debt, and we have no idea how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're expecting to do. And we've driven all the multimillionaires away by upping their taxes to 14% a year state. And now they want to go after people that have lived here 10 years and try to take 1% if they have over $30 million net worth. It's not passed yet, but they're trying to put that stuff in there. So you know, they, 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 they haven't decided they want to do that yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolute crazy times. Uh, we had a Wall Street Journal article. I want to mention this came out this morning about the Costco uh, gold sale oh, yeah. craze yeah. that's going on. Uh, to me, that's a sign. Yep. I, I do think that we're seeing a bit of a percolation, um, you know, like we just turned on the crock pot, right? And it's just starting to warm up in terms of, our fellow Americans starting to wake up. I'm sure on your channel, are you seeing a lot of new stackers that show up? Uh, I, I am. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of new people come in. Um, I've seen a lot of people asking questions that are what I would call green questions. Yeah. Um, they'll be like, "How do I buy it? Um, what's a good price? You know, things like that." Um, it's the older stackers that are kind of asking, do I sell it or I'm never going to sell it or whatever else. And, you know, silver has a higher premium than gold. So you do have to wait a little longer for the price to go up before you start selling anyway. Yeah. Um, but I, I am seeing a lot of new people coming into it. The Costco thing's huge. Um, mm -hmm. to me, that's the first sign that it's starting to go a little bit mainstream. Um, yeah. you know, but to your point, I, I do think a good selling point is when you start to hear the checkout person at the grocery store ask questions about gold and silver. And when they don't know that you have a channel about it, or they start saying something about it, or you hear grandma or your mom or your dad starting to ask questions about it, and they don't currently own any of it. Yeah. Those are kind of the indications you're towards the top of a market. Um, but but yeah, I think a lot of people are picking it up um, right now that understand it, and they're, they're stacking it, and they're trying to grab as much as they can. Um, I also think you're starting to see if a bunch of new people come in. But Ron, um, what happens if if we go from you know our current level and just double it, I mean, there's I don't think there's going to be a lot of supply for people to go grab. So no. I do think that's where that spring comes back in from the rubber band is all we have to do is have it go from one to two percent, and we're out of supply in the bullying dealers and everything. It can be it can be wiped out in hours. I yeah. mean, things have changed. I, I was uh, if you talk to the old timers that were around in the late seventies, eighties with silver, and there were. Lines of people outside the. Okay, uh, sorry, that's my wife Susie. She she calls me on this walkie-talkie. Um, but there were lines of people out the door at the local coin shops, right? Because back then, if you wanted to buy gold or silver, you had to go to your local coin shop, and you maybe you read about it in the newspaper or your your buddy, you know, called you on the old rotary telephone, whatever. Think now things are different. We have instant communication, right? And with online bullion sales, I mean, it can be wiped out in the matter of hours. If, oh, yeah. you know, if people, you know what I mean? And we kind of saw that <clears throat> a little over a year ago during the, uh, the, the the little banking crisis that we had in what, March, April of 2023, how quickly, I mean, silver was gone. Um, you know, you had to wait. They the, the online bullion dealers raised their minimum order levels and were saying, you know, I remember five, six, eight weeks. Andy talks about getting, I think he gained like, I don't know, 40,000 customers in a month or something. I mean, it's crazy with communications being so much faster, but also the ability for the purchases. You don't, the, 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 the lines around the door at the local coin shop in the 80s are now, you know, the one hour or two hour potentially of people 
flying under the under the under the you know JM bullions, Pimbex, SD bullions, and wiping out the supply. Uh, it could happen. It could happen really quickly. Um, do you mind stacking surfer? We have a little tradition. I ring a bell when we get to a certain number of. Uh, yeah, that's good. I'm going to ring the uh, peace dollar because you you uh, talked about that today. Um, and I want to ask you, which do you like better, peace dollars or Morgans? Uh, I like Morgans a lot better. Yeah, me, too. Think, me too. Me too. I think the peace dollar looks like uh, she woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> now, what is it about the Morgan dollar? I don't, I just, I, I mean, I love peace dollars. And actually one of my great subscribers uh, sent this to me. Sorry, somebody's calling me there. Um uh, but Morgans, there's just something about the Morgans that uh, that I just love. Uh -oh, Susie's so. asking for you again. I think <laughs> I know Susie's <laughs> like, time for you to get off and do your chores, Ron. All right, let me let me ring this ten times for Stacking Surfer and Ron from Ron's Basement. Thanks, guys. We're saying thank you for all the thumbs up, and I want to remind everybody: go out to Stacking Surfers. I forgot to say this when we looked at your at your channel. Go check out Stacking Surfer's channel and subscribe, okay? He has great information, great content, uh, and I'm sure, as you can tell here after the last 45 minutes, a great guy. I'm going to ring this 10 times. There we go. That's 10. And and to prove to everyone that I can count to 10. Let me uh, let me just run out here one more time, Stacking Surfer. Let's go to Pimbex real quick and see what the price. So gold's up $26 per ounce, $35 per ounce. Man. Oh, no. I almost bought and, some yesterday. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey, hey, you know what we can say now, Stacking Surfer? You, if you guys need to listen, Stacking Surfer and I both told you a couple days ago, buy gold, buy silver, mm -hmm. right? Um Silver up 48 cents. And this is pretty much the spot price. So that's not the futures price. Wow. And I want to go to the most important place here, the Stacking Surfer website. Now, isn't going to be embarrassing if it says that I'm not subscribed, but it doesn't. It says I am subscribed. So you go right there, press subscribed, and someday you'll get to see either Ron from Ron's basement out in sunny California. Uh, do you have a basement at your house, Jared? They don't do basements here. I mean, maybe, maybe homes before World War II, but okay. right now okay. they don't. So yeah, we, I have a casita. I'm in the casita right now. It's uh, like a converted garage section. So oh. we, the downside of California is our yards are tiny. I'm only on 7,000 square feet lot. Wow. And, um, and you know, houses are tight. Everything's kind of tight here in California. The benefits, the weather is what we get here. And we get the benefit of paying more taxes than you guys do. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask you earlier how many how many gold coins you have saved up, saved up to pay your property taxes out yeah. there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, property taxes a lot of money. So we're about one and a half or one and a quarter percent of the value of a house for property taxes. So you guys wow. can go out on Zillow, go look at prop, you know, houses out here. You'll see that the taxes are pretty high. Wow. Yeah, I would imagine uh, pushing ten thousand dollars. So wow. Yeah, I'm a lot um, more than that. A lot more than that. <laughs> well, keep saving those gold coins, my friend. Hey, um, thank you for joining me today. You've been well, great to have. Me. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, on behalf of all of our viewers, I know they've enjoyed uh, hearing from you as well. Again, I'll encourage everybody go check out Stacking Surfers YouTube channel, and uh, I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, Jared, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, everybody. Peace out. Okay. See you later. Thank you.